Patriots, Warriors, Freedom Fighters, how are we doing? My name is Kyle Chapman, also known as Bay Stickman. I want to go ahead as Vice President of the Proud Boys, go ahead and introduce this next gentleman, Ben Varga. I'd like all the Proud Boys to go ahead and come up on the stage, please. If you are a Proud Boy, go ahead and assemble on the stage here behind me. Y'all doing all right? Proud Boys, ladies and gentlemen, we, we are a fraternal organization of Western Chauvinists. We are here to defend our Western culture, society, and civilization. We are ready to fight, bleed, and die for this shit, guys. Let's hear it for the Proud Boys! All right, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to introduce, introduce a, a very special man here. Let's give it up for Ben Farga! It's fucking hot! Hello, my fellow Americans. My name is Ben. I'm here as a concerned American. It is with great honor and pleasure that I speak to you today, here in Washington, D.C., at Moore. Since the time I was a child, I have passionately believed in our great American flag. Everything it stands for. But passion only goes so far. We are a competitive country. We like to think of ourselves as the best in most everything we do. And rightfully so. The fire in our bellies burn bright, but also sometimes engulfs more than intended. Competition at the heart of all great sports, the greatest combination of passion and competition comes from legendary rivalries. Ellie versus Fraser, Lakers versus Celtics, Yankees versus Red Sox, and Duke versus North Carolina, to name a few. These rivalries share many things, including excitement, sold out arenas, and sometimes borders. But certainly not fans. It's the greatest thrill of all for fans come from beating your buddy's favorite team. In sports, we keep our competitive arguments usually in contest. We limit them to who is the greatest team or player and may have intense, but hopefully friendly argument. When, when it comes to our politics, through our fires and burn even more intense, we take it personal. We feel as, as it's our problem. We, one nation under God, all Americans must unite and forget about our, forget about our differences. It doesn't matter if we all call ourselves liberal, conservative, independent. At the end of the day, we have a mother, father, Brother, sister, grandson, granddaughter. The reason we get the reason we get together today to celebrate the American flag. It represents our core value to include all people of the United States as one collective group. It's probably the best, summed up by President Kelvin Coolidge, who said, our Constitution, 
Our Constitution guarantees equal rights to all of our citizens without discrimination on account of race or color. I have taken my oath to support that Constitution. It is the source of your rights and my rights. I propose to regard it, regard it and administer it. It's the source of the rights of all people, whatever their belief or race. We stand today in the crossroads of our country. Politics, racism, separatism, radicalism, all test the strength of our unity. We need to turn to our faith in God and our fellow man to work together to overcome our base urges and our misconceptions and rise up as one country, indivisible, under God. Americans have had many cir circumstances of dealing with tough choices in our country. But, looking back in the past, there is a common factor in the solutions. Abraham Lincoln faced some of the greatest challenges that could face any man. He wins a hard-fought presidential election, and then 16 weeks before he goes to the inauguration ceremony, he has seven states secede and form the Confederate States of America. Wherever you feel his place among the presidents stands there is one thing about President Lincoln that cannot be denied. He had, the, he had faith in God and he read the Bible and he believes in God's guidance and the U.S. Constitution. He led, he led the country out of a civil war and he embellished slavery. His general, who would later become President Grant, famously said, hold fast to the Bible as the sheet anchor of your liberties. Write it, precepts on your hearts and practice them in your lives. To the guide in the future. Therefore, we must believe in God and God's words in our country in a tor turmoil. In conclusion, I would ask that we seek common ground before differences, friendship before rivalry, unity before, before conflict. Please continue defending and representing our Constitution and help to teach our younger generations to lean upon the words of our forefathers who gave their lives so that we could live as a free nation. We, not, we need our youth to learn the Bible, believe in God and his kindness, and learn to look for the good in our fellow man. I hope that I leave you today with a revitalized vision of how we can turn to the Bible in our times of difficulty. And we can all work together in our beautiful country to move forward together. Thank you. Build that wall, build that wall, build that wall. is we are all sons and daughters of Western culture and Western civilization, and we are all united by God. Let's hear it. The West is the best, ladies and gentlemen. The West is the best. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you, proud boys. Thank you guys, love you.